Hey everybody, my name's Sheldon Thomas. Today we're going to be working on a quarter horse. Her name's Mocha. And the reason she gets the fancy shoes we'll be putting on her today is she has a, something called navicular disease, which is specific to quarter horses. Not that they're the only ones that can get it, they're just the ones that get it most. Um, and so it's it kind of has a couple different names. When, we, when it was first discovered, it was called navicular disease, and then they started calling it navicular syndrome. And now it's called caudal heel pain or heel pain. I tend to just say heel pain because caudal heel pain just seems kind of redundant to me. The caudal part of the foot is the back half of the foot where the heels are. And so by saying caudal heel pain, you're kind of... Anyway, that's just... Uh, a dumb little nuance that doesn't matter. I just call it heel pain and quarter horses seem to be overrepresented in the population of horses that have this disease and navicular disease is one of those things that's kind of as we've learned more about it and with advanced imaging like MRIs and CT scans it's changed and that's kind of why the name of it's changed so in at first veterinarians would do a nerve block that numbed the back of the foot and the horses would be sound after that and there's a little bone back there that's called nav the navicular bone so the veterinarian could go ahead and take an x-ray of the back half of the foot where that bone is and sometimes they'd see little lesions on that bone and so that's kind of where the name navicular disease came from but then some of them with the same signs and symptoms and breed disposition and all that would have the same lameness and they wouldn't see any any lesions on the bone but they didn't really have <clears throat> any other options or anything else to call it so it got navicular disease and now with advanced imaging they've been able to go in and and see a lot more and they realize that it's not always the navicular bone that's causing the problems and so that's why the name is kind of changed to just heel pain it could be caused by a lot of different things or the tendon sheath the deep digital flexor tendon there's little ligaments that hold the navicular bone in place and anyway there's a lot of stuff back there and not that that really matters to what we're doing here but just that's a little history on navicular disease and what it is because I th feel like it just kind of gets thrown around and a lot of people don't know exactly what you're talking about when that word gets thrown out there something I've also seen is horses will have heel pain from things like thrush having really bad thrush that really eats away the frog and stuff and makes them sore in the back of their feet or horses that just haven't been taken care of and get long underrun heels and put pressure where they shouldn't be putting pressure and I've also seen it from what's called short shoe and basically just putting too small of a shoe on there and that causes them to have heel pain not necessarily the degenerative disease navicular disease or heel pain but they have heel pain from having the wrong size shoe on there um, and all that stuff can be corrected but the kind of the degenerative navicular disease is more what this guy has and that's the one that tends to be more of a quarter horse thing and I'm working on getting a, a hoof specimen so I can actually show you guys what all this looks like inside of the foot but until now I hope I kind of painted a decent picture of what navicular disease is and now when you're getting together with all your friends and telling each other cool horse facts now you can at least smile and, and nod when people are talking about navicular disease. Okay, since this is a horseshoe in video, why don't we get to the point and actually talk about how to shoe a horse with navicular disease. So kind of the things that I keep in mind when I'm shoeing a horse with navicular disease is there's kind of three factors that I kind of use a combination of, of one of the three and one of them is reducing leverage off the toe, which takes tension off of that deep digital flexor tendon that I talked about. Another you can do is wedge up the foot, which also takes pressure off of that deep digital flexor tendon, therefore takes pressure off the navicular bone. Or also you can put a bar shoe on, which basically the thought behind that is the back of the foot hurts. And so the bar shoe stabilizes the back of the foot, makes it to where it can't move as much and so if something hurts you just make it move less and it tends to help some horses and usually you kind of use a combination of two of those whether it's a bar shoe 
with some elevated heel or a bar shoe with with the leverage taken off the toe or a shoe with an elevated heel with a wedge pad or something with a break over brought back kind of a usually it's a combination of two and and you talk to a bunch of different farriers and they all kind of have their their combination of a some kind of shoe package that that they like to use and it changes depending on the horse because like we talked about a little bit ago what's actually wrong with the horse is different with each horse so some horses the foot looks real good and the hoof pasture and axis is real good but the so you don't probably shouldn't be wedging that horse up but you could and it wouldn't be nothing wrong with that if you decided that's what the horse needed and anyway so it gets kind of complicated and but those are kind of the three principles that I keep in mind when I'm deciding how to shoe a horse with navicular disease. I did a previous video on another horse I have that I'm shoeing right now that uh, has navicular disease and I have that horse set up a little different, kind of using those same principles of set up a little different and I did a video on it a little bit ago and so I'll link that video here if you want to go check that one out and see the different way I have that horse set up. And right now I'm I probably have four or five different horses that have navicular disease and I have them all set up just a little bit different depending on the horse's needs and stuff and so that's what kind of makes navicular disease complicated it's not a one size fits all and so this isn't something that you should run and tell your farrier hey I saw this thing online and this is the way I want you to shoe my horse now just let him do what he knows and he probably knows best for your horse and what we're doing here isn't necessarily what your horse need. Okay guys, enough of me battling there. Let's focus in on what we're doing here. So I've got the horse trimmed up and I've got the shoe shaped. And what I'm doing here is just gonna walk over and, and check my fit on the horse. And I was kind of bummed. My camera got bumped and was pointing off in Timbuktu. It wasn't even paying attention to what I was doing. And so I didn't get to video how I shape aluminum because that was kind of a game changer when I learned how to do that because I used to just shape it cold and you would really wring your hands and beat the shoe till you're blue in the face trying to shape aluminum and so learning how to shape it hot in the forge was a game changer for me so I wanted to show you guys that but anyway unfortunately the camera got bumped off and and so I'll I plan on I'm gonna change some stuff up on this horse since I did this shoe and job I've been thinking and and trying to figure out how we can better help it and so I'm gonna the next time I go do it I'll get that videoed and I'll in that video I'll make sure my camera is good and I'll be able to show you guys how I shape aluminum so make sure and keep an eye out for that video and you can see her progress and you'll notice when I put that shoe up to the foot to check my size smoke didn't come off when you're shaping aluminum you're not getting it as hot you're not getting it hot enough to actually burn it on the foot so I was just grabbing it with my with my uh, tongs there just so I didn't it's hot enough to burn my hand but not hot enough to to hot fit on the foot and okay so while I'm getting this sh shoe nailed on I'll explain some stuff I did so while I was shaping it I put a a roll on the toe which basically just puts a bevel on the toe again going back to those principles of, of taking leverage off the toe and taking stress off that deep digital flexor tendon and anyway and so I did that and then also this shoe, you can see the step up on it. And so what that shoe does, I'll give you a little side profile view right here. So you can see as the horse is just standing there, it acts as a wedge. And actually, if you zoom up here, you can see that there's actually an air gap right there between the heel of the shoe and the ground. So the idea is, I mean, as the horse is just standing there, or as he's standing there eating or whatever, you're unloading the heel of the horse that hurts and shifting the weight forward on a different part of the foot that doesn't hurt. And that seems to relieve pressure on the on the horse's feet. Also, the other thing, as you can imagine, as that foot's coming through the air, horses land either flat or slightly heel first. And as that, if they are landing heel first, they're basically coming down and pounding on that part of the foot that hurts. And so that little step up as it comes and meets the ground, the idea is that that catches the ground just ever so slightly and and puts the foot up on its toe and makes it to where it doesn't land heel first and therefore takes pressure off the heel of the horse and hopefully makes it feel better. So that's kind of the mechanics behind this shoe. Okay guys, moving right along. The next thing we're going to deal with here is this horse has been kind of struggling with thrush. Me and the owner have been working together to try to get this under control and so... This time the owner's gonna try to be real aggressive 
obviously I'm starting off by getting in the right direction right after this shoe and then the owner's going to stay on top of it and see if we can't get it kicked in the butt. But if not, we might have to switch things up this next shoe and kind of be a little more aggressive and taking care of it. And I'll explain why here in a second. Before then, I'd like to just kind of explain what thrush is and uh, and then explain how we treat it. So, so basically the bacteria is called Fusobacterium necroforum. It's kind of a mouthful, so I just put it up there on the board for you so you can see it. A um, little bit about this bacteria. It's a gram-negative bacteria, anaerobic, which means it needs a, an environment that doesn't have oxygen to be able to survive well. Kind of a fun fact, that's the same bacteria that causes hoof rot in cattle. I didn't know that until one of my classes in vet school, but learned that and thought that was kind of interesting. So now that you know um, a little bit about, about the bacteria, the big thing, the important part about that is that it's anaerobic, which basically tells you in the presence of oxygen, it dies. And so that's why it's such an important thing if you have horses to be cleaning out your horse's feet and expose the bottom of that foot to oxygen because that's like taking away the oxygen to us that kills you. And so that's what you're doing to the bacteria when you're cleaning out the feet. You got to make sure you get down in those sulcuses on each side of the frog to get to really help that out. And so the product you saw me use there, it's kind of my go-to for thrush, is a product called Durasol. And the reason I like it is because a lot of times that bacteria actually um, eats away at the the hoof tissue and actually eats down to sensitive tissue. So the the bottom of the hoof can get tender from thrush. And so this Durasol has some some properties in it that actually harden up the bottom of the foot. And so I feel like one that may be a little tender footed because it's basically walking on the sensitive parts of its foot because the thrush is eating away all of the protection. I like Durasol because it gets in there and hardens it up and helps the horse get back to feeling better while also treating the thrush. And like on this horse, the owner and I have talked and she's going to get out here every day and, and get that foot cleaned out real good and see if she can't get ahead of it. And that should work. But like I said, stay tuned. I'm going to do this horse here pretty quick and, and get another video out to you guys and I'll show you the progress on the thrush. Before I kind of wrap up our topic of thrush, I forgot to mention why it's so important to, to get thrush out of the bottom of the horse's foot. <clears throat> Besides making the horse sore, kind of the long-term effects of it is as it, it, it kind of attacks the frog. I mean, it'll get around the other part of the foot, but the, it mainly goes after the frog. And so what it does is it eats away that frog and it gets smaller. And the, the frog is an important part of the whole hoof. And what it does is it, as it expands, it helps the foot expand. The foot naturally wants to contract. And so if that frog's not big and, and plush and full of moisture and all that, then that foot's not expanding and contracting normally, which help, helps with venous return of blood and, and helps just with the overall healthy foot. And so if the thrush gets in there and eats away that frog chronically over a long period of time, you're going to end up with contracted heels and a whole slew of other problems. Okay, guys, our time's kind of run short on us. If you've got any questions about thrush or navicular, make sure and go down in the comments and ask us. Be sure to let us know where you're from. Here's some after pictures for you. Hope life's treating you well. Remember, be sure to stay tuned for our follow-up on this horse. Be good, and we'll catch you next time.